On this episode of Doing the Most, we're brewing up a buckwheat honey braggot. We call this one the Wampus Cat. Moment brews and bears are twos, everything from meat to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. This recipe starts in the kitchen. The ingredients for this mead braggot are four and a half pounds of wildflower honey, one and a half pounds of buckwheat honey, one pound of honey malt, and one and a half ounces of centennial hops. We're going to be using Kivike yeast for this recipe. We're going to pour one gallon of our brew water into a cast iron Dutch oven. When we put the honey malt in here to mash, it's going to drop the water temperature. What we're looking at is about 154 degrees Fahrenheit. So we want to heat the water in the Dutch oven to about 165-ish degrees. So that way there's some wiggle room once we drop the malt in. That pound of honey malt is going to go into a brewing bag. Honey malt is a specialty malt that has honey characteristics. And so it provides a little bit of non-fermentable sugars. That way the bag is just a touch sweet on the other end, but also it provides a little bit of extra honey character. Now, in recipe testing for this, this is probably the 10th or so time that I've brewed this. In our recipe testing on this, we tried all kinds of different ratios of honey malt and we found that one pound was plenty. It can be kind of overwhelming when you go into higher amounts. It has some eccentricities to its flavor and so it should just be in there to give that touch of honey. You don't want it overwhelming the brew. Our oven has a warming feature, so we're gonna pop that up to 140, and then we'll turn it off once we put the mash inside. Our strike water is up to 166, so it's time to drop our honey malt in, and we'll just swirl it around a little bit to make sure the bag gets saturated. Then the lid will go on, and it will sit in the oven for one hour. Once that hour's up, we'll pull our mash out and check that temperature again to see where we were at. Remember, we were trying to shoot for 154 degrees. Nailed it. We tied this bag with a loop so it can go on the handle of a mash paddle. And then we're going to drain that into our brew kettle here, which is just a large stainless steel pot. It's important to rinse our grains. So we're gonna pour about a gallon of our brew water over that until the bag runs clear. And then squeeze out any remaining liquid in the bag and then our mash liquid goes in there as well. Now we're gonna bring this up to a rolling boil, which on an electric stove like this takes a while. I am really missing our gas range from our previous kitchen, but it does the job. As that's coming up to a boil, we're gonna put our hops basket inside of there, and I'm just gonna set it down. It's got enough of a lip on there to keep it from touching the bottom. And once that's come up to a boil, we're going to add our first hop addition and this hop addition is going to be half an ounce of centennial hops that will sit in there for the full hour. Once those hops go in, we're starting a one hour timer. Once that's boiled for 45 minutes, we're throwing in one more ounce of centennial hops and a whirl flock tablet. The whirl flock tablet is made of Irish moss and it's a fining agent that you add during the last little bit of the boil and it will help this clear much quicker than if we didn't add it. This is a totally optional step. At the one hour mark, we will remove it from the heat, remove our hops basket and drain any of the wort that is inside of there and pour in some very, very cold water that had been in the deep freeze for about three to four hours. And up to this point, you're probably wondering where the heck the honey is. We have buckwheat honey here that we get from a cool little farm that sells it on eBay. But first, we're gonna rack off our wort into our sanitized carboy. This is in no way a paid endorsement. I just wanna give them business because their buckwheat honey is freaking awesome. And we're gonna measure out a pound and a half of that then tear our scale and measure out four and a half pounds of wildflower honey. And yes, I am awkwardly pouring this from a giant bucket of honey. I still haven't bought myself a honey gate for my honey buckets, but uh, you know, if it ain't broke, why bother? So it takes a while to glug that much honey out. Moment of zen. And then we'll lift our honey bucket up and we have got just about four and a half pounds. So in total, we have six pounds of honey going in here. 
four and a half pounds of wildflower and a pound and a half of buckwheat. After racking, we'll have a little bit of warm liquid in the bottom of there. So we go ahead and pour that on top of the rest of that honey, mix that up and get that into the fermenter as well. At some point, I'm gonna have to buy one of those big brewing funnels, but somehow in a decade of home brewing, I just haven't got there yet. Then we're gonna to top up to five gallons and give it a nice stir. Wanna make sure all of the honey is completely combined with the wort before we pitch our yeast. Using an instant read thermometer, I'm gonna check the temperature. It's 93 degrees, so that's a wonderful temperature to pitch Kjovaik yeast since it loves warm temperatures so much. And get a gravity reading, even though the temperature is a little bit higher than room temperature typically is, at least we can get an approximate gravity reading on this, which was 1.045. We're using Upshog, I hope I'm saying that right, Kjovaik Ale Yeast. It's a relatively newer yeast to me. I haven't seen it available for purchase until recently, and it comes in this cool little liquid pack. And then putting it under an airlock, and we'll wait it out. About 12 hours later, it was roaring to life, which was a great sign. I will say, though, that compared to other Kivak yeasts I've used, this strain seemed to move quite a bit slower. It took about two weeks for this to ferment out, whereas I'm used to Kivak working through one of these in about a week. So once that finished fermentation, we went ahead and racked that off into a sanitized carboy then added sparkaloid. That's about a tablespoon of sparkaloid into about a cup of boiling hot water. And then about two weeks later, it was crystal clear. So we're at about a month from yeast pitch at this point. I'm gonna be kegging this batch. You could easily bottle condition the Wampus Cat by using about three and a half ounces of corn sugar, that's dextrose with about a cup of hot water, mix that together and pour it into your bottling bucket and then bottle in beer bottles and cap them and then wait about three weeks and it will have bottle conditioned and carbonated and be ready to drink. I have kind of fallen in love with kegging at this point because it's an easy way to get something carbonated super quick and I've been using burst carbonation to get it drinkable within a couple of days rather than a few weeks. So for this video, we're showing you how to do it in a keg. But like I said, I've done several batches bottle conditioned and it's worked out just great. Once we switch to serving PSI, we can draw off a lovely pint of that. My kegging setup is currently in the garage, which is not ideal, but it's what's available. And then we can have a taste. The thing I love about this recipe is that it is simple. It doesn't require as much skill or equipment as a lot of beer brewing setups and recipes might call for while providing you a beery and honey forward product at the end. The buckwheat honey gives it some hay-like kind of earthy, woodsy kind of flavors. While the alcohol by volume is bolstered up by that wildflower honey, that provides a little bit more of a neutral flavor. The honey malt gives you some of that light sweetness on the back end, on the exhale, if you will. And the Centennial hops are relatively neutral in flavor, so they're giving you some of that gentle bittering and just a touch of aromatics from the hops that hit it in the last 15 minutes of the boil. This one has some oomph to it, while also being relatively crushable. And if you use Kjavik in this recipe and keep the temperature a little high, you'll get some interesting florals and esters in there too that are thrown off by the yeast. I recommend Kjavik yeast for this recipe, but any ale yeast should work. This is for real one of my favorite things, one of my favorite recipes I have ever brewed. And a lot of work and time and effort went into honing down this recipe to get it where it's at now. I hope you'll brew it. I hope you'll try it out, particularly if this is your first time brewing a braggot, because I would love to know what the community thinks. And I would love to know if you have suggestions for how to improve on this recipe. The Wampus Cat is open to interpretation. As always, you can follow us on Instagram and Pinterest at Doing the Most OK, and our website is doingthemost.org. We hope you'll brew up a batch of the Wampus Cat and let us know what you think. We love Kivike yeast, we love buckwheat honey, and we're so happy to share this with you after months and months and months of work trying to get this recipe just right. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep doing the most.